Okay, this is a little show and tell here. This is not a stamp scene, uh, and I hear a collective ah, you know, because I know that used to happen when I used to show these photographs in my uh, early, early lectures, um, you know, showing people um, where I got some of my ideas from. This is not uh, a case like that, but I wanted to show you this. This is a scene, a painting by this guy, Walfredo. Um, and I just looked online, I entered Walfredo paintings, and uh, you can find his website out there. Backyards, I don't know where I got this from, I don't know if someone gave it to me, but seeing that it, uh, this is a Hawaiian artist, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe my client, uh, my former client out in Hawaii might have uh, given this to me or something, or I might have been traveling out there and picked it up, I don't remember. But I was looking at this, and this is, uh, I don't know, it, it looked you know, it's like something like we could do in uh, stamping. I can see some, I don't have like that kind of longer looking, uh, it's not really a palm tree. I'm not really quite sure what kind of uh, tropical plant that is, but, um, or tree. It looks like something out of the Lorax actually, but we have the seaside cove like that, and the cloud cumulus and kind of this uh, surface down here. I mean, it's lush with the different types of flowers and plants and whatnot. You know, we can do some kind of little stream maybe going out to the sea. But I wanted to show you this. This is like the perfect example of what I've been talking about in um, uh, my scene lighting videos, okay? I've always talked about this kind of oscillation of light and dark within your given spaces and over your given objects, okay? So right now we have kind of three different spaces right here. We have this foreground area right here. Um, there's, you know, a decent amount of depth in there. We have our sea right here, and then we basically have our sky right there. But look at this, there's always kind of this point of light. There's this variation in the different areas of light and dark. We have this little area right here that's casting this light down into this area right here, but it's mostly dark on the perimeters like that, kind of defining the light within our space right here. And then we have our foreground right here, and what he's done is he's kind of darkened in this area right here and left this little light area right here. And if you look in each one of these spaces, even though there's, you know, these two areas especially are largely cool areas, he has this warm light right here, being his light source, and the reflected light is that same temperature of the light. So you have that pale yellow like that. And see, by keeping it really pale like that, he has the benefit of um, having temperature, okay, warm, without darkening. And if he went too dark in the, the yellow, it wouldn't be light anymore. It'd be much darker, and there wouldn't be as much light being cast and reflected off of these given surfaces right here, okay? This is one thing I need to do sometime, that backlit type of wave where you have uh, that illumination. My tendency is kind of to darken in that whole area, but I love a backlit wave like that. But here you have that spin drift coming off the top. We can do that in our um, bleed proof white, I think, and our gel pen, but this is really a cool uh, scene here. I really like that, you know, that little light down here, kind of retaining that little area of water being really reflective like that. And you can hit some little gel pens in there and you're stamping. But anyways, check out his website out there and he has some videos on his uh, paintings as well. I haven't watched them yet because I just checked right now to see if they were on, but I'll put the uh, name down in the, uh, uh, the descri uh, description area of this uh, video. But um, I don't know, kind of a fun little scene right here and uh, something that I'm going to have to uh, try to reference and try to uh, do in a small stamping scene sometime, okay? I think this little area in here is something that we can really, uh, you know, learn from and uh, I don't know, try to build up some sort of, a, I don't know, heavily foliated area, even then try to keep the variation. See those little pinkish little flowers um, to go along with these red ones right here. Okay, and those could be done in, I don't know, maybe a gel pen. I'm not sure about the red ones, but the pink ones for sure. I don't have like a really strong opaque red to go in there. I don't know, maybe we can try something with uh, embossing. Anyways, fun scenes, fantastic scene lighting. We have light source. 
and reflected light, okay? Creating a nice dialogue. So you go dark, light, dark, light, dark, like that, light right here, and dark, a nice oscillation. And within, uh, within these given spaces like this, where this area is right, really dark, uh, light right here, He's added these little areas of darkness to just kind of bisect those areas to make it look even more rich in terms of his uh, kind of a lighting scheme that he's working in. See this right here? This is light up here. And then there's this little area of dark like that just to separate these two a little bit, you know, to keep that kind of oscillation going. But basically, you know, light, 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 and just dark like that. And it uh, makes for easy and very effective lighting scheme.